Hi everybody, welcome to Pace Studio on the Road. We are live right now from Beach Road Weekend on Martha's Vineyard with Clem Snide. Eve, thank you for joining us. We appreciate it very much. Yeah. My pleasure, yeah. my pleasure. Yeah, man, this is great to have you with us. You are very literally hot off the stage right now. Uh, just just played your main stage, stage set. Uh, so yeah. thanks for taking the time to do this with us here today. Uh, sure, we're thanks. about to hear, hear three of your songs, a brand new one, and two from the 2020 record, uh, Forever Just Beyond. What do you yeah. want to start out with? Uh, yeah, I thought I'd uh, debut this new song. Um, it's called uh, Kamikaze Cockpit Blues. Uh, <laughs> and it goes like this. Death is not failure. I feel like death. I feel like death is not. Death is not surrender. Oh, how can it be? How can it be? How can it be not? not be this way oh how can it be how can it be how can it be not not be this way bones crash in the blind side waves lap at the edge Lost without something to die for. And hopes dashed for a pardon for some comfortable life. Die for. Yeah. 
Nice, man. I like the uh, the way the applause sounds in this reverberant room. It sounds like there's more than two of us, I think, yeah. <laughs> clapping. Um, how how did one, as a question for you, how did that mic respond to that? Ooh, it seemed like it's well matched to... Yeah, but yeah, it was, it was kind of <laughs> not that effective. Right, yeah. right, right, right. I know. I, I'm trying to, I do it in my laundry room, you know, and it yeah. works in the laundry room. I'm not, never quite sure if it works on stage or not, but... <laughs> yeah, but yeah, it works the microphone now, man. Awesome. Yeah, nice. Nice. Was that so? I've I've uh, listened to a few episodes of the um, of uh, a life in song, the podcast that you're uh, doing right now. Was was the provenance of that song that you just played? Was that inspired by? Did that have anything to do with your podcasting world, or was that written apart from the context of that podcast? Or how did it come to be? Yeah, you know the thing about I started writing songs for people. I mean, the podcast is sort of based on that notion of just writing personal songs for people based on their you know stories and kind of what they tell me about uh, about their hearts and souls and uh, and yeah and a lot of the songs end up being uh, especially on the podcast about I didn't intend for it to work out this way but yeah a lot of more than a few are about you know dying and death and one of them is about a near-death experience that's pretty wild you know I was looking for some real you know kind of metaphysical that sort of stuff. So this one, I think, is is kind of like a culmination. You know what I'm saying? When I write a bunch of songs. I, sometimes I like amalgamate them all and make like one super song kind of out of yeah out of them all. So that one is not for like a specific person, but it's more sort of dealing with the themes and stuff. You know? Yeah, that makes sense. So not not the same and part of that collection, but very much related to that yeah. that body of work. Uh, have you picked up any stories by any chance since you've been uh, here on Martha's Vineyard in the context of this festival? Have you heard any stories that, that uh, met any interesting people that feel like they're going to turn into songs? <laughs> you know, I've not, I haven't been here long enough. I gotta, I'll go hang out in the, uh, in the catering tent for a few hours and see, <laughs> see what I can dig up. But, but yeah, I find so I do a lot of home shows, you know, for the last 10 years. I've just been, yeah, the band sort of, everything sort of fell apart like 10 years ago and, and it was just me, you know, the last man standing. I couldn't fire myself, that's the joke, I had to, unfortunately. Um, <laughs> but I started playing living rooms, you know, sort of direct, just going directly to the super fans and, and I find that people uh, that know me or know my music certainly uh, are eager to tell me you know their their deepest darkest uh, secrets <laughs> you know and it's kind of beautiful and yeah i find it really kind of inspiring to you know as a as a source for songs so nice was it um did that that model that idea of going to people into their environments that seems like that would be very well suited for the pandemic and play like you know outdoor distant like back yeah. backyard shows in 2020 when no one else was able to no to that's, see anything, that's funny because you know? yeah i was uh, I, I think i was like the only uh, dude on tour in 20 you know spring of 2020 because i I, I reached out to people, you know, if they wanted to do, yeah, just like you're saying, private backyard, you know, masks, whatever, yeah. and uh, ended up keeping pretty busy. You know, people were, yeah, people were. That's when I realized too how much people love live music. Like, there's people out there who just can't live without it. Which, uh, yeah, and they go to festivals such as this one. I mean, I, I would never go to a festival <laughs> unless I had to, <laughs> unless I had to play there. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I don't like big crowds, you know. Yeah, make man, me nervous, well. but uh, yeah. So it was. It actually worked out uh, pretty wonderfully. All, all, yeah, all I agree. Time. I mean, it is. It's essential. You know, it's no no mistake that this is what we do. Profess. We get to. This is the coolest job there is. We get to go around and just do this all the time. So. I mean, yeah, you know, just uh, yeah. I had to. I like to. I like uh, doing it. Yeah, in someone's living room, just you know, without any any stage, any amplification. I mean, you lose a certain excitement but the intimacy that you can get in that situation you know cause it sort of makes up for it i think and and can be really you know really wonderful for sure yeah fully agreed um well we're about to hear two songs off of the current record uh forever just beyond what do you feel like doing second today yeah so i thought i'd do this one it's the last one uh on the record and uh, yeah i wrote it with uh, a certain scott avid in honor of uh, the avids who are who are playing here tonight too i thought i'd uh, i'd bust this one out it's, uh, it's called Some Ghost, and it goes like this. Oh. 
After the rumble, we'll find a spot to nurse our wounds. Please don't push so hard. Try not to mumble. My ears are shot and it's too dark. It's too dark for anybody here but us with no choice. But to trust some ghosts trapped in our head, some ghosts trapped in our head. After we stumble. Find a part our stories told. Please go and tell your own and try not to tumble. The path is dark and sometimes steep. It's too steep for anybody here but us. With no choice but to trust. Some ghosts trapped in our head. Some ghosts trapped in our head. I won't rest until the pain is memorized. The door was unlocked all along. So I confess to casting some shadows here and there, my heart a little less than strong. A little less than strong. in our head some ghosts trapped in our head yes. all right thank you it. Uh, so you mentioned mentioned uh, Scott earlier. I know you guys have uh, the, he produced the record, co-produced the record, or produced the record. Yeah, I mean well, he uh, he produced it. He made it happen. You know he uh, yeah it was. I mean it's kind of a miraculous story. I think I uh, yeah I didn't you know I didn't have a whole lot going on, and uh, and then some you know some fan just sent me a an email like a link to a, a email or a, a video of his. Of Scott playing a, in a pretty obscure Clem Snod song at one of their shows, and I just couldn't believe it. And uh, and yeah, so eventually I kind of reached out to him, and and turns out he was a big uh, a big Clem Snod fan. And somehow I uh, I coerced him, I cajoled him to making a record with me, <laughs> and he did it. He paid for it all. He produced it. You know, his label put it out. So he really uh, yeah kind of rescued Clem Snod. And, Excellent, man. I'm glad to hear that. That's um, so. What are, what are some of the the strengths, each other's strengths, in that working relationship where you play into? Uh, like, what is that, what does that dynamic look like for you guys? I mean, yeah, I never, you know, I never like wrote with, never really wrote with other people. It was always very sort of solitary in the uh, in the process, and and having him was, uh, yeah, it was very like opened opened me up in a way for sure. You know, I think we're both even though we come from like different worlds, you know, he's like raised on a farm in North Carolina and I was from Israel, you know, but I think we just came together in this, you know, sort of metaphysical way, the kind of spiritual sense. I think we're both trying to get at similar, you know, similar notions, similar themes. Uh, and yeah, and that was kind of, you know, we sort of really came together in this very creative space. Like we didn't even know each other personally, but we 
you know, we just created this little space where we could be creative together, and I, I, it was really special, you know, it was wonderful. Good. Good, man. Uh, is the, the third song that you're going to play today, is this a co-write as well? I know it's from the record. This one, I, uh, that last one we wrote together, but yeah, this one is one I wrote myself, but it's the first, uh, here, I'm going to put this down for a second. It's the, uh, it's the first one on the record. It's get to play the little uke. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Are you want to change? Are we pausing here? Can maybe? you tell us a little bit about that, uh, the instrument itself while we're doing the, the mic adjustment? <laughs> yeah. Um, so this is, uh, yeah, there's, there's four sizes. If you're into ukuleles, there's actually four sizes to choose from, and this is the biggest one. That's the baritone uke. Um, and uh, yeah, I kind of discovered it years ago. And I, uh, yeah, I think it sounds so nice. And then I invented a tuning, so it's tuned in some weird, mysterious way that I don't even understand, just for this song, so, which is fitting for this song. Um, but uh, yeah, so this one, I'll just tell you a quick, uh, I don't know if I should explain it. It needs a little explanation. I was, uh, I was just, we popped up on my on my computer an interview with this guy's wife, right? And she was talking about his final moments. And so I took his uh, final words, you know, and just uh, once you hear the song, you'll understand who I'm talking about. <laughs> but I just, uh, yeah. So these are his actual words that I just stumbled upon sort of randomly, and I was really sort of taken aback by it. Um, so you know, I'm just uh, I'm just the messenger. You know what I'm saying? I'm just the messenger. Uh, Anyway, it uh, goes like this. Check it out. Did you know these were Roger Ebert's dying words? Did you know these were Roger Ebert's dying words? It's all an elaborate hoax. It's all an elaborate hoax. It looked ever peaceful, it looked ever young Accepting his moment that soon would be done He wrote in a note that he passed to his wife As he felt himself shedding the skin of this life It said, there is a vastness that can't be contained Or described as a thought in the flesh of our brain It's everything, everywhere Future and past dissolving together in an eternal flash. <gasps> With no words to say that he loved her so much. His hand seemed to pass through whatever it touched And the credits that rolled listed all of God's names As images floated away from their frames From their frames Did you know these were Roger Ebert's dying words? Did you know these were Roger Ebert's dying words? It's all an elaborate hoax. It's all an elaborate hoax. Right. 
Eve, thank you very much. Uh, I know you got to catch a ferry for a show tonight. Are you doing another show tonight? Is that true? Or is it no, it's soon? It's, at some point soon. Yeah. <laughs> I do got to get off this island. You know, getting little, <laughs> I'm getting cagey already. Um, but yeah, tomorrow night we're at, uh, playing with the Avery Brothers in Port Chester, New York at the Capitol Theater tomorrow night. So be there or beware. <laughs> right. Man, thank you very much for coming and doing this. Uh, have a safe trip and, and all of your future tour dates as well. Uh, thank you, man. It's been a total, total pleasure. Oh, thank you, guys. My pleasure. All right, see you next time. That's that, man. We did it. <laughs> Back away. Yeah, sounds awesome. Oh, uh, thanks so much. Yeah, sounds great.